everybody, it's Ron Bass with another edition of The Ron Bass Show, your source for inspiration, encouragement, motivation, jokes. Jokes, laughter. Laughter, dry humor. Anyway, guys, thanks for all the uh, comments. I appreciate that. And uh, we're back again for another week of fun. Mr. Brent Atterbury, our executive producer. Glad to be here. Glad to be anywhere. That's what I tell people about my age. Glad to be anywhere, right? <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, so get to some, maybe some serious conversation today for a while, and then we'll kind of break it up a little bit. I wanted to talk about... Um, something that I think a lot of people go through in their life and maybe they're not quite sure how to deal with it and I want to discuss it today and that's the problem of not being sure about the people that you trust in other words somebody in your life maybe several people in your life that you think you can trust you want to be able to trust but some way, somehow, in the end, you find out maybe that's just not the case. And then a lot of bad things start to happen. We feel bad. We feel used. We feel like, you know, this shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be the case. And, you know, it's very disappointing. And so I want to talk about that kind of a person. Um, you know, these are people that, in my opinion, are very disingenuous. And you don't really see that in the beginning because they're pretty charming people, right? Charm, charming, I think, is a really good... I think that's an adjective. Charming. Maybe it's a noun. I never was that good in English. It's anyway, a cool word. It's a cool word. Yeah. Um, disingenuous. <laughs> Basically, the lack of being genuine. The opposite of being genuine, right? Right. Liars. Ooh, I haven't heard that word in a, lot, in a while. My mother used to get really mad at my father and call him a liar. She'd get mad and start yelling at him. You're just a liar. You're just a louse. I don't know where that word came from, louse. I haven't heard that in a long time. I haven't either. No. Not sure where that word originates from. Yeah. Um, thieves in the night. It's another interesting phrase to use or to describe somebody that um, is disappointing, takes advantage of you. Users. Uh, people that manipulate you. Man. I know I'm going down a kind of a dark road here, but I think it's important because people don't really like to talk about stuff like this because they feel like if they get screwed around, then they feel like that, you know, their ego is really hurt. So they just kind of want to brush it under the carpet or under the rug or they want to not talk about it. But I think it's really important to always talk about things that people are uncomfortable to talk about. Get it on the table. Talk about it. Hit it head on. Um, and the best word probably to describe people like that are people that are narcissists, narcissistic um, ways, people that are self-centered and selfish, people that uh, only care about themselves, but they act like they care about you and they really don't. Narcissist. That's a nasty word. I bet you guys know people that are like this, huh? So I want to talk about it a little bit and kind of delve into it a little bit more. Selfish people, greedy people. You know, I just never could be that guy. And, and yet, it just seems like there's a whole lot of people out there that are like this. And sometimes you can pick it up right away, but somebody that's really good at being a narcissist, they're so good, at, good about it, so good at it, that it takes you a long time to figure it out. Then once you figure out you've been duped, man, that's a bad deal. Yep. You wouldn't know anybody like that, would you? Not too many people, but I do know some, yes. I'm being sarcastic. I would suspect you probably know several in your career <laughs> that were like that, that mistreated well, you, that that weren't who they yeah, said they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you're right about that. And it's sad, but you know what? Let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about how do we how do we how do we recognize somebody like this? What what can we do to get better at this so that in the future th it doesn't repeat itself as much? What can we do in the beginning of a friendship or relationship to recognize these traits so that we don't get screwed and we cut them off at the pass, so to speak? Do you have some thoughts on that, sir? The first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the word trust. Um, um, and uh, trust is earned. So you can't, you can't just open up the vault okay. and I say... 
you're my best friend after meeting them. So right one. away is, is a mistake, so yes. to speak. In other words, you should be cautious and careful and take yes. your time to get to know somebody, yes. whether it's business or friendship or yes. personal or romantic or whatever, yes. and be just be patient until you can begin to see if it's real or not real. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes, yes. Good idea, sir. Maybe you should I, uh, I have one every six <laughs> months or so. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. No. You're, you're so funny, you should be on stage. And there's yeah, one no. leaving in about 15 minutes. No, it's strange, yeah. 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 Stage coach. <laughs> oh, one of my students the other night told me a really funny joke. They said, uh, they, they, they were acting like they had a mustache. They go, I must ask you a question. Uh, now I'm going to shave it for later. It's pretty good, huh? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I must, a must ask, must ask you a question. I, no, I'm going to shave it, save it for later. Uh, I thought that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they came up with that. Uh, I, I, they fall into the category of dad jokes, I've heard. Is so. that what it is? Yeah. Okay, so uh, recognizing a narcissist up front. And there again, I think some people are just so damn good at it that you can't figure them out. Mm -hmm. You can suspect, but that's another thing. If you suspect that there's an issue... Hold off a little bit to close that gap. Don't be so friendly so quick. Don't be so trusting so quick. Yes. Hang out a little bit. Because they were still saying people will usually hang themselves. Yeah. If you give them enough time, right? Yep. Um, and so let's just say that you, you do screw up and you don't recognize it and you want to, you know, figure that the good outweighs the bad. But really, they're the bad, they're the bad guy and now you're the good guy. What are you going to do about it? How, how long should you hang in there with that person before you cut them off, so to speak, versus, you know, hanging in there and continuing to get uh, browbeat, continuing to be used? What's your feelings about that, sir? You know, I, I think all friendships or relationships have different stages. And... Um, you know, I've run in uh, one example I can use really good is is where you tell this person, OK, this is between you and I okay. don't 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 share this with so and so. OK, well, guess what? If so and so um, hears about it, then, you know, the next person day, is that person that is not going to be somebody you can trust. Yeah. And there right. used to be this uh, girl I knew called Hallie. And we always said there's the. There's the uh, telephone and there's the telehally. If you want <laughs> to get if you want to get the word out, you just tell her. Tell Halle. But uh, but but no, I I think does that mean that person's a bad person? Uh, are they going to take advantage of you? I don't necessarily think that. That's why I think every relationship is has stages. So Fair so if yeah yeah if you're if you're at the best friend level and you've confided in them for years and then they they uh, they uh, they do hurt you or go the wrong direction. Uh, you know you have to you have to step up and and fix that. Here, here's, right a, away. here's a problem that I see uh, when you're young and you're in love. I think I was saying love is blind. So I think people, I think guys in particular, tend to look the other way when they see bad traits in their in their relationship because they're so addicted to the person or personality. And they sweep it under the cart, sweep it under the rug. They don't. They don't. Don't want to acknowledge the fact that this person is probably going to be an issue, probably going to be a problem, and and that's just human nature. It's just the way it works, man. You can't really teach somebody to be that cautious when they're in love. When they're in love, they're going to excuse everything. Mm -hmm. They're they're not going to be realistic about things. Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer for that one. Even even my own self, I was thinking about it last night before I went to sleep. I was reflecting when I was younger in some of my relationships. And it's like the stuff that I tolerated because there again, when you're young and you're in love, it's just the way it is, man. So if you got that problem going on, guys, I don't know if I have any advice for that other than just have to go through it and figure it out as you go. And eventually one way or the other, it's probably going to end or, or you're going to figure it out and work through it one way or the other. I don't, it's, it's odds are it's probably not going to end well if that's a bad person, but anyway, right. So uh, why, why does this even matter? I, I, I'm thinking to myself, why should I even talk about this today? I'll tell you why it matters. There's a lot of reasons, but one reason in particular, in my opinion, is that 
if you accept somebody mistreating you and accept that bad behavior and, and being duped like that, it just erodes your self-esteem. It just, it just erodes your self-respect. And if you don't have self-respect and you don't have a good self-image, you're a long ways from getting to where you want to get to in life. It's tough enough if you do everything right in life to get to where you want to get to. But when you allow these things to happen, you allow people to take advantage of you, it's going to be almost impossible to be successful because your, your thinking's all wrong, you're upset, you're frustrated, you're just not going to be on your game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's very important, guys, in my opinion, to be very, very careful about who you hang with. What's the old saying again? You become who you s surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. And you become what you think about. Those are laws of psychology. They're not theories. They're laws. Laws of psychology. It's the same kind of a law as if you dropped a cup from the top of a building. It's going to hit the ground. You become who you hang out with. You become who you spend time with. So if you want to be successful in a particular profession, hang out with people that are successful in that profession. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's sport, if it's business, whatever it is, that's where you need to spend your time. That's why I go to the gym every day because I'm around very progressive, ambitious people that are interested in good health and wanting to feel good and look good and, you know, have a clear mind. There's nothing like going to the gym if you don't feel up to speed. And by the time you leave, you're going to be so tired that you don't have, you know, you're not thinking about anything negative or you're just going to be so lit up with endorphins that you're going to feel like a million dollars. Either way, you're winning. Okay, uh, I think another reason why a lot of people don't want to eliminate these friendships is because change is not comfortable. So, change you know, is hard. Change is hard. And I told somebody last night, we were talking about success. She said, I've really been depressed the last week. I've gained a lot of weight. And I said, well, okay, look, you have to have the discipline to at least work out every day. If you're eating bad and you're working out every day, you're probably not going to gain as much weight. Maybe gain no weight. But if you don't work out and you're eating bad, of course you're going to gain weight. And now you're going to feel even worse about yourself. And now you're going to be even more depressed. So I don't know what you got to do to get yourself to, to exercise every day. You know, in, in Springfield, Missouri, where we're at, it's only $10 a month to belong to a gym. So it's not like money's an issue. Anybody can afford 10 bucks a month. Well... Maybe if you're homeless, you can't, but you can panhandle $10 probably in at least that much in a day and join a gym, right? And man, some of these homeless people would do that. Their lives would be so different. They would change their, their thinking. They'd want to, you can take a shower at the gym, you know, you can borrow a razor blade and speaking of razor blades, I didn't shave the last couple of days. <laughs> That's terrible. I just thought about that. Sometimes you need to have discipline. I know. I'm, I'm not being disciplined. <laughs> sometimes I just... That's something we should talk Sometimes I grow about. a beard, yeah. Talk about discipline? Yeah, we should really focus on that. Okay, let's focus on discipline. One last thought about the um, dealing with people that are, that are narcissists, dealing with narcissists. Um, if I could read my notes, I'd tell you what my last idea was here. I can't read. Oh, well, basically, it's to suggest that you just need to hang out with the right kind of people and get rid of these bad people in your life. That's another. If you'll exercise and be around good people, guys, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy to be successful, but that will make it make the pathway a whole lot better, a whole lot clear, clearer. How about that? Okay, you want to talk about discipline? Sir? I just thought that might be a great subject for you to talk about at okay. some point let's talk about, to... let's talk about it right now okay what, what what's what does it take to have good discipline what what are the requirements uh good work ethic maybe i think incentive is what helps people yes. to have a discipline be disciplined in other words if you know that you're willing to work 16 hours a day and go to the gym every day and be around the right kind of people and don't do drugs and alcohol and you know, and, and don't gamble and do all the right stuff. And you know, if you do that, you're probably going to be, have a lot more money in your bank account. You're probably going to feel a lot better, look a lot better, have more social success. If you're looking for women or women looking for men, you're probably going to uh, sleep a lot better. So if you think about the rewards for being disciplined, 
it's a lot easier to go through the uncomfortableness of the discipline process. Does that make sense? Yes. So always focus on the reward when you feel discouraged about wanting to do the right things. Oh, I just want to go gamble. Well, no, if I don't go gamble, you know what? I'm going to have more money in the bank. I'm going to feel better about myself. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be able to avoid uh, you know, a lot of uh, guilt feelings. Okay, so I'm not going to go gamble because I'm going to feel a lot better the other way than I do that way. Yes, you're going to get the thrill. The endorphins are going to be flowing and all that. But it's short term, guys. Doing the right thing creates long term feel good. Mm -hmm. Sex, chasing money, chasing women, chasing sex, chasing gambling, chasing drugs and alcohol is a short term feel good. Success, accomplishment, is a long-term feel-good, and it's permanent as long as you're staying on that track. You get off that track, and then you got to earn it all over again. So, look, it's a lifetime gig. You can't just snap your fingers, and everything's wonderful all the time. You're going to wake up some mornings. You're going to go, man, I just don't feel good. Why don't you feel good? I don't know. You think it through. Why don't I feel good? Well, maybe because the day before I did something I should have done. Maybe I... Uh, you know, I'm not disciplined yesterday. Maybe I didn't go to the gym yesterday. Maybe I ate too much. You, if you analyze yourself, you're going to figure it out and you're probably going to be able to say, okay, now I have to avoid all that and I have to do all this, follow the rules, and then you're going to get to where you want to get to in life. doesn't matter how many times you fail, get back up, get back up, go, go down, get up, go down, get up. You got to get back 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 up. You can never stay down. And there's always another day. As long as you're alive, you've got another day in front of you that you can reinvent yourself, figure out what you didn't do right, figure out what you don't like about yourself, make those corrections. I'm not saying do it, you know, can't do it overnight, but over the course of a few months, a few years, you can change your whole life and you can get back on track and you can feel better and look better and be better and be a better person to help other people to get, help them to get on their track on a good track and be more successful. That's basically what we're doing here today is all my ups and downs in my life, I, I've been able to use as reference to be able to talk about these things to you guys. Because everything I talk to you about, I've been through. And I've had to figure out how to overcome the bad things and how to run with the good things. Does that make sense? Yep. So it's really not that complicated, guys. But when you can speak like I can from experience on both sides of the fence, Hopefully it comes through genuine, not disingenuine, <laughs> and get the point across to help people. So, all right, sir, any breaking news? Oh, yes. Oh, let's hear it, man. <laughs> yes. I'm ready. Yes. Well, and this is for the people that, you know, uh, know that the end is near and, and uh, you know, they're, they're not going to be around this world uh, uh, much longer. Okay. But they, they want to maybe come back someday. Oh, there's a company that will freeze your dead body until oh it's reanimated years later. Oh my. But it comes with a hefty price. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think it's called Chirogenics. Cyro Something like that, I think I've read. Uh, uh, a Berlin based company is charging $222,603 wow. plus a $55 monthly membership fee. <laughs> Now, I don't know how you pay that when you're not here. I don't know how you do that. But, uh, you know, uh, that's to put your body and body parts on ice right, until goodness. you're ready to bring them all back to that's life. That's crazy. So, so just, you know, this is the, if you just want your brain, the just the just brain, brain is $83,473. Oh I'm in the wrong business. For, for doing just the brain. That's crazy. So uh, anyway, uh, also today is National Senior Citizens Day. Oh, I can relate to that. So, you know, Yay. hug a senior citizen. Well, I mean, don't get too well, at in least the personal space. Knucks or maybe shake their Do hand. Do something nice, yeah. Have have respect for that senior citizen because today enough. is their day. A couple of thoughts real quick along those lines. I was taught many years ago by a professional salesperson in a sales scenario where you're reading somebody, they always say, be ready to move your hand, but if they don't reach their hand out, if your customer doesn't reach their hand out first, you shouldn't shake it. They say that people take offense for getting into their space, but if they're willing to offer their space, then you can shake their hand. I thought that was interesting. I've heard some coaches disagree with that. Other coaches say yes. Number two, 
uh, Walt Disney, they say, the guy that started Disney World, Disneyland, they say that his body is frozen somewhere underneath the, the, um, the palace or the, the Cinderella palace. The castle? Castle. Wow. Yeah. But that's rumor. That's who knows for sure. Yeah. He uh, died of, uh, I think, lung cancer. He was a heavy smoker, if I recall. Mm. So don't smoke. I used to smoke. I smoked from 13 to 31. It was tough, man. Three packs a day at one point. So I was telling that to one of my students, one of my coaches, actually. And I said, man, nicotine is just like heroin, they say. It's so hard to give it up. And he got very defensive with me. He says, hey, man, I used to be a heroin addict. And nothing's as bad as heroin. I said, well, I, I didn't mean it the way you're taking it. I'm just suggesting that quitting nicotine is as complicated as quitting heroin in the sense that it's very addictive. Now, obviously, heroin addiction has a lot greater consequences than cigarette addiction. Although in the end, probably you can't say it because a lot of people that get lung cancer, 80% of, of those people are smokers. So I didn't mean to offend anybody when I said that, but uh, just throwing that out there. All right. Anything yeah. else, sir? No. Man, I guess parting is such sweet sorrow, but we've come to the end of today's <laughs> podcast. <laughs> so I said that to say this. If you don't give up, and remember, that isn't even anything you should ever think about. Never, ever, 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 ever quit trying. Never give up. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the stars, they will line up. I don't know when. If you don't give up, sooner or later, you stay on the track, they're going to line up. So until that time comes, and even afterwards, always stay positive. <laughs>